All right, Math Man, let's get after it. Here we go. We've seen a number of videos that highlighted the different exponent rules. So what we're going to do here is we're now going to put them all together. So we're going to look at questions that look like this. So here you can see we have a whole bunch of different bases with respect to negative signs, but with respect to the number, they're all the same, right? The number is a two, which means we know in the end, our answer is gonna be two to the power of something. We just don't know if it's gonna be a negative two yet, and we don't know what the power is gonna be. So we have to do our forever positive, forever negative talk, and we have to figure out what's happening to each one before we can do anything else. Combine the entire top, then combine the entire bottom, and then do the last step. So let's look here. We have a forever negative statement because there's no brackets and we have a negative sign. We have a forever negative statement because we have brackets, but we have an odd power. And then we have a forever positive statement because there's just no negative sign. So let's simplify the look of that. Well, let's make sure that negative one is apparent. And then we'll do that again because we can rewrite that forever negative as that. And then we have a forever positive. Now, before we even look at the bottom, we can already tell that, okay, I have two negative ones, goodbye, goodbye. So two of those negatives are already gone. On the bottom, you have two to the power of zero. Well, that's just one. And then you have a forever negative statement. Right? This is forever negative because there's no brackets. So two to the power of three. So you'll see here we have a negative one left in our question, which we can translate right to the end here and say that means our answer is going to be negative. What we have left is we have a two to the three times two to the five times two to the four on top and then a two to the three on the bottom. And yes, the, the negative would be down there, but I've already included it in the answer. So I'm not gonna include it in the rest of the detail. Now on the top, you have uh, all common base now, no negatives, We're adding exponents. So three plus five is eight plus four is 12. So we have two to the power of 12. And then on the bottom, we have two to the power of three. And when we divide a common base, we subtract the exponents. 12 minus three is nine. So that gives us the exponent for our answer. So it's all about dealing with the negatives first, and then we're just combining all the steps we learned so far. So let's look at another. So now you can see we have a whole bunch of threes, right? Um, and we got all the positives and negatives. So we know our answer is gonna be three to the power of something. We don't know if it's gonna be positive or negative, so that's what we're gonna try and find out. So we gotta deal with forever positive, forever negative. So if you look at the first one here, well, this is forever positive because there isn't a negative sign. Remember that the negative exponent has nothing to do with the positive and negativeness of the base. And we'll look at that a little bit more closely in a bonus video, but also in grade 10 for sure. The next one is forever negative because yes, we're in brackets, but we have an odd power. And then forever negative because we don't have any brackets. So again, what does that look like? Well, we have three to the negative two times negative one times three to the five times negative one times three to the seven. And again, just like the last question, those negatives will already cancel out with each other. So that's done. Now on the bottom, we have a first look here at power to a power. So remember we multiply our exponents. So we end up with three to the six down there. And then this is forever negative. So times negative one and then three to the three. So again, I'm gonna take this negative one and write it in my answer because I know that's gonna make my final answer negative. And otherwise I'm not really gonna consider it in the remainder of my question because the remainder of my question is dealing with my common base, which is a three. Yes, that negative would still be written down here, but I'm just including it right away in the answer. So now we're adding our exponents on the top again. So uh, negative two, be careful. Negative two plus five is three plus seven is 10. So three to the 10 and on the bottom we get three to the nine. And then we subtract our exponents, 10 minus nine is one. So it would be three to the one, or we can just leave it as negative three. So there you go, that's another example. So let's do one more here. Uh, there's a piece I wanna point out uh, that's worth explaining. This is why these get more and more complicated because there's minor, minor little intricate details that make a difference. So look at the first one, forever negative, no brackets. Now the second one we have something interesting, right? Because we have a, negative base in brackets to a negative exponent. But it's not the negativeness of that exponent that matters, I've said that before. It is still whether or not that exponent is an odd number or an even number. And that is an even number. Even though it's negative, it's an even negative number. So that still makes this forever positive, okay? So this is forever positive. So is this, because there's just no negative sign. And then remember on the bottom for power to a power, these can be complicated about forever positive, forever negative. We need to look at the outer exponent first. 
That's odd number. So the inside actually matters, right? With an odd exponent, if the inside's negative, then the whole thing's negative. And you can see that this is a negative statement because there's no brackets in here. This is a forever negative on the inside and it's to an odd power, which means it's forever negative. So we have forever negative down here. And then we have a forever negative here because there's a negative sign, no brackets. So what does this look like? Well, it means we have a negative one times five squared. And then we have a positive base now, because that's forever positive, and just five to the six. On the bottom, we get a forever negative, and then five to the 10, because we do power to a power here. And then we have a negative one, and then five to the negative four. So again, anytime you see two negative ones, they either multiply or divide with each other to give you positive one, so they'll cancel out. So goodbye, goodbye. Now, we have a negative left, left, which means we have a negative answer. Our base is five, and now we're dealing with exponents. So five to the two times five to the negative four times five to the six, all over five to the 10 times five to the negative four. So we get uh, eight minus four, five to the four on top, and five to the six on the bottom. So here's another example of where what we have. We will subtract those and you end up with five to the negative two but it's gonna be negative five to the negative two. Now up to this point, we have never seen an answer like that, but we can deal with this answer. I'm gonna show you here, but there'll be a whole video on why. There already is one in the grade 10 section, but I'll chuck one in the grade nine section too, just for those of you that are eager. The whole thing stays negative, but then a negative exponent becomes positive when the number moves to the base. So we have five squared. So you might be asking, well, where does this negative come from? It's just this negative, right? We have a negative value, means we have a negative fraction. So that would be the most detailed answer, but for our level, I would still accept that one. Okay, this is the hardest you'll see at this level. Um, so embrace the challenge and get after it. Now, what happens if all of a sudden we see addition or subtraction in our question? And I don't mean a negative sign, I mean addition or subtraction. Because in the other questions, like here, everything's, there's negative signs, sure. But we're still multiplying everything together, right? We're here, we're not. So we need to, we can't do exponent laws over addition or subtraction. You're not allowed because exponents are repeated multiplication. So you cannot do it. All you can do is simplify the bits you can simplify. So here we have something we can simplify. And here we have something we can simplify because those are just basic exponent laws. Here we're multiplying a common base, so we add the exponents, we get two to the power of seven. And then we have that minus sign. And now it's worth noting, this is forever positive, and this is forever positive. So we have basically two to the two times two to the four, right? So we're gonna have two to the power of six. Now you might be tempted to go two to the seven minus two to the six is just two. Don't do that. Don't you dare do that. It's not true, right? Because exponents mean repeated multiplication. So we have to actually compute these. Two to the seven is two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16 times two is 32 times two is 64 times two. We have 128 minus 64. So 128 minus 64, well, it's 64. It's not two, right? You can tell that's definitely not two. So we can only compute and then calculate when we have a negative, or in this case, you'll see when we have a positive. So what about the next one over there, the one I just circled? In this case, we have something we can do here, and we have something we can do here. So the first one's multiplication, so we're gonna add the exponents. We just get three to the three, because three to the zero is one anyways. Then we have a plus sign, but now look out, because this is forever negative, and this is forever positive, which means our answer is going to be negative. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put it in brackets just to separate the positive and the negative. We're gonna have negative three, and here we are dividing the exponent, or the basis, so we're subtracting. We have negative three to the two. And you'll notice I didn't put the two outside the brackets because it's not outside the brackets. I just put those brackets on to separate this thing from this thing. And I'm going to get rid of them now so you can see what it would actually look like and why I put those there. Because technically you have this, which means you have 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And then we are adding, but this is equal to negative 9. So we're adding negative 9. So it's basically subtraction, 27 minus 9, which gives us 18. So 
Be careful with positives and negatives because you cannot use your exponent laws over top of them. You can just incorporate them into the scenario. That's it. That's all of our uh, exponent videos except for that bonus negatives one that I'll throw in. Uh, but you're working hard, you're trying hard, keep it up. And if this stuff's getting confusing, always go back to your notes. It's supplemented in our section 2.5. Our entire section two on the website covers all of our exponent laws. So you can always go back, you can read, you can watch the videos, put it all together. You're learning. Keep it up.